We continue our study today on all that Jesus taught. We were looking at the second half of the Great Commission, the first one being Mark 16, 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creatures. The second half, Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. To go and make them into disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We looked at this in the last two studies. And then he went on to say in verse 20, teaching them to do all that I commanded you. This is part of the Great Commission. That once we go into all the world and tell people that they are sinners, Christ died for their sins and rose up from the dead, descended to heaven and is returning. And he is the only way to the Father. And where we find people responding to that, we invite them to make Jesus Lord of their life, to be disciples who are going to follow Christ all their life. Baptize them into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Introduce them to the mystery of the Godhead. And it doesn't finish there. That's like coming to the starting line of the Olympic marathon race. I mean, even that is a great feat. If you got selected to represent your country and you come to the starting line of the Olympic marathon race, that itself is a feat. But it doesn't mean anything because that's just the beginning of the race. So the fact that you become a disciple, you've been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that's great. But then begins the race. And in that race, we are to be taught to do every single thing that Jesus commanded us. And this is going to take a lifetime. And this is what every church should be doing. If a church is majoring on making disciples and baptism, it should not stop there. What should they be teaching every Sunday in their church services? Every single thing that Jesus taught, all that Jesus taught, not just a few selected things and certainly not psychology. It's sad when a church is more interested in improving its music than improving the quality of its members. That's extremely sad. What do you think God in heaven would be more interested in? Here's a new church, for example, that's gathered together. Let's say people who are really born again and who really want to make Jesus Lord of their life. And if you find that church is concentrating on music, do you think God's interested in that primarily? It's good to have good music. I'm not against that. But it's a question of priority. What is God more interested in? The quality of those people in that church becoming more Christ-like or the music becoming more entertaining. And there you see how Christians have drifted away. Christian leaders haven't understood. What are we supposed to do? We are to teach people to obey every single thing that Jesus commanded. And we cannot teach them that, how to do that, if we haven't done that ourselves. Notice the difference between Supposing Matthew 28, verse 20, had read like this. Teach them all that I commanded you. And here it says, teach them to do all that I commanded you. What would the difference be? Teach them all that I commanded you. Teach them to do all that I commanded you. I see the difference like this. Teach them all that I commanded you means... I take all the teachings of Jesus and teach them, just like a man teaches chemistry or physics or history. He studied it and he teaches it. But teach them to do would mean that I've done it myself first so that I can teach them how they can also do it. If I haven't done it, I would be like a person teaching swimming. 
when I don't know how to swim myself. And you know, if you've understood the principles and techniques of swimming, you can explain it clearly on a blackboard to a whole lot of people and not be a swimmer yourself. That's teaching them. Teaching them to do is showing them in the swimming pool or in a river how you can actually go on the surface of the water and move from place to place. So a, a Christian leader has this responsibility to teach people to actually do every single thing that Jesus commanded. And that is a huge area. And that's what we want to try and study to fulfill that command. All that I'm seeking to do in this program is to fulfill that command of Jesus. To teach all that Jesus taught. To teach you to do it as I've sought to do it myself in the last 52 years of my life. Not just picking out the things which are my favorite commands or the ones that are easy and neglecting the others. Do you know that some commands of Jesus are more important than other commands? Some commands in scripture are more important than others. Even in the Old Testament law, there were many commandments that God gave in the Old Testament. We know the major 10 commandments, but there were 603 other commandments, a total of 613 commandments, many do's and many don'ts. And some of those commands, commandments were not as important as the 10 commandments. And Jesus emphasized that in mentioned that in Matthew chapter 5 when he speaks about the least of these commandments in Matthew 5 and verse 19. He uses the expression the least of these commandments. So in other words in Jesus understanding all commands, commandments did not have equal importance. There was an order of priority. Some things were more important than others. There were certain commands like certain types of food they were not supposed to eat in Leviticus 11. They were not as important as not committing murder and not committing adultery, but they were still commandments. And that's what made Daniel a man whom God accepted because he decided to keep those least commandments in the Old Testament. You remember in Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8 it says, he determined in his heart not to defile himself with the king's food. Perhaps there was some pork on that table or some type of bird that God had forbidden in Leviticus 11. Now Daniel may not have been able to give all the explanation for the reasons why God had forbidden those things. But he decided if that is part of the law of Moses, even if it's not part of the Ten Commandments, I'll keep it. And he, he, it's written there that he wouldn't defile himself. And God honored him for that and made him a mighty witness in Babylon because God saw there a man who was willing to keep all his commandments. This is how it has always been through the ages. God has looked for those who will keep his commandments, who will do all that Jesus taught, not just pick and choose what they like. In Matthew 5, 19, he says, Jesus said, whoever cancels or annuls one of the least of these commandments and teaches others also shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus doesn't say he'll go to hell, but he will be the least in terms of heaven's recognition and values. Now to be least on the earth is absolutely unimportant. It doesn't matter. But to be least in the kingdom of heaven means that God Almighty doesn't think much of you. I don't want to be in that category. I don't care if the world doesn't think much of me, but I certainly want to be, want God to think much of me. It is said about John the Baptist, the angel Gabriel told his father Zachariah, John the, your son John will be great in the sight of the Lord. That's certainly something worth coveting, to be great in the sight of the Lord. To be least in the sight of the Lord, to be one whom the Lord doesn't think much of, I don't want to be in that category. 
And yet it says here, there are going to be some people who are least in the kingdom of heaven, not because they don't keep the major commandments, but because they ignore the minor ones. And I find that attitude among many Christians even today. They say they are New Testament Christians, but they take some minor New Testament commands and say that's not important. You don't have to obey that. I'm not questioning their faith in Christ. I'm not here to judge whether they go to heaven or hell. That's not my business. God is the judge of that. But I certainly say, I believe what Jesus said, that if one cancels the least commandment of all that Jesus taught, and all that Jesus taught through his Holy Spirit, through the apostles, in the epistles, then he will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. And in contrast to that, who's, who's the one who's going to be great in the kingdom of heaven? The one who keeps the least commandment and teaches people to keep the least commandment. Matthew 5, 19 could not be clearer. It's very, very clear. Your attitude, let me say my friend, your attitude to the smallest commandments in the New Testament is what shows where you stand before God in his kingdom. Your attitude to obedience. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's the mark of our love. Nobody can say, I love Jesus and ignore his commandments. So if you ignore the least of the commandments of Jesus, in that measure you don't love him. Maybe you do keep the big ones. But it's the, your attitude to the least of them that determines your position in God's kingdom. This is so clear.